ito, papasok na po tayo dito sa so we're done with the, the hard skills. And I would just like to point uh, point out something here that uh, when we are trying to develop uh, research methods for our uh, for our project, um, uh, we ang first option po natin uh, should be what is already available. Uh, when we're already pressed for time and resources, so uh, maybe it's uh, instructive to first look for what is available within our school if the if the something some uh, instrumental methods has already been done uh, in our university so probably try to work on that first kasi chances are kung yung experiment na yun ay ginawa na sa university nyo, um yung tools or yung instrument might still be available the the technician might still be there to help you and uh, you can still consult the the students kung he's just like within the area so uh, doon po tayo muna magsimula para hindi tayo uh, nahihirapan because as tempting as it is to to use sophisticated sample as uh, sophisticated methods um pag minsan yun po yung nagiging bottleneck ng research natin so let's try to to uh, work within our means and try to see um, kung yung uh, method na yun ay nagawa na ba before by some students. So we uh, go to the library and search our thesis there, our databases there uh, for available methods within our uh, uh, institution. So that's our, let's say, first line of um, uh, first line of thinking when it comes to um, finding research methods for our project. And the second um, second option would be uh, find a related research within the locality or nearby areas. Let's say, uh, taga San Pablo kayo. Let's say uh, that study was done in UPLB. So probably you can contact somebody uh, from UPLB if this uh, analytical method is available. But when you uh, approach uh, professors or teachers, uh, in another area so come up with a plan so show them what you have in mind the, the the research project the research aims and objectives and what you are using that specific analytical method for so kailangan ipakita nyo sa kanila na hindi pa hindi mo masasayang yung yung efforts nila uh, uh, when they're trying to loan or teach that method to you uh, kung available dun sa dun sa uh, institution na yun. so pwede natin itap yung local uh, resources natin in that way uh, when we are trying to uh, find applicable research methods kasi nga po as much as possible uh, we try to implement standard methods but uh, they are not always available so we can first try these two uh, two approaches and uh, when push comes to show then uh, I think third uh, third example is to search the internet for alternative methods for, for analysis. And sometimes this may be applicable to our um, to our project. Sometimes you, meron yung mga apps sa phone that where, where your phone could be uh, can serve as a spectrophotometer trying to see like color changes kung colorimetric lang naman yung ating uh, colorimetric colorimetric lang naman yung experiment natin. We don't need uh, UV-VIS for that. So, kung uh, di available ang UV-VIS spectroscopy, then probably we can do this uh, ad hoc methods or in-house developed methods um, for our analysis. Kasi nga po, uh, we're really pressed by time and we can justify this uh, in the final manuscript na ito po yung implement natin. But uh, I would just like to point out that when we're using this uh, alternative methods or in-house developed methods, uh, let's try to um, associate that with the standard methods by using um, like known uh, standard materials and compare the response uh, between a standard method and your um, validated method. So it's really important that our methods are traceable to <clears throat> Standard methods, kasi uh, that 
that spells the, the reliability and the applicability of your method to a larger scale or of applications. Uh, pwede siyang reproduce by other group and uh, can be validated. I can be um, validated later on ng ibang tao. Mm -mm. Okay. Meron akong example dyan, JP. Yes, Tita, please. Mo, yung sinabi mo na kailangan kung, kung kulang ka dun sa materials na hindi mo makikita, titingnan mo yung local, kung anong available sa local, di ba? So, meron kaming ano, dito sa lab namin, yung media namin na nilalagyan namin ng carnation leaf para mag-produce ng structure yung fusarium na fungus. Tapos, hindi na namin, wala, hindi na available ang carnation leaf kasi ang sterilization niya, irradiation. So, hindi kami pwede sa lab. So, mm -hmm. ang literature review, so, ang fusarium, nagkukos ng disease sa banana, pineapple, ganyan. So, sabi ko, baka pwede naman ang banana leaf kasi ang carnation, pwede rin siya doon, doon nagpo-produce kasi doon siya, Parang yun ang natural environment niya. Pero mm -hmm. kung nagkukosya ng disease sa banana, di sabi ko, gumamit kaya tayo ng banana leaf. So bumili ako ng banana leaf sa Asian market. Tapos mm -hmm. ginamit namin yon So nagproduce nga siya ng, ano, ng structures. structures. So mm -hmm. meron kaming pampalit dun sa yung mga ganyang experiment. So ititingnan mo kung anong pwede at saka bakit, yung anong rational nun kung bakit exactly. ginawa kayo. yung carnation. So, titingin ka, baka meron namang alternative. Alternatives. Okay, yeah. And that's creativity, right? Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And resourcefulness. Kasi nga, uh, At saka, yun yung... Review. Kasi, kung hindi mo alam na nag-cause yan ng disease doon, hindi siya tutubo doon sa banana leaf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and... Kuya Jeff, go. I was just gonna say like very quickly. So, ang... Ang ginagawa po namin ngayon ni JP is more on mentorship po of teachers. But if you would like to consume yung sobrang detailed po na trainings, inilagay ko po lahat ng links sa lahat ng steps. Mga mukha rin po namin yung makikita. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we have, we, we invite experts from different fields po, like statisticians, para po talaga makuha niya yung content. And then we also highly encourage for you to share them with your students. Um, yan po ay freely accessible. Hindi po kumi kami kumikita dyan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so gusto lang po namin talaga na yung tinuturo namin sa inyo as teachers, kumonekta po talaga sa mga estudyante. Meron ako comment, Jeff, dun sa Sige hypothesis. Apo. Yung hypothesis talaga Baka yung hindi masyadong clear sa sa iba. Yung so nung process of inquiry, nakikita mo nag-observe ka. Meron ka nga yung question. So yun ang scientific question mo. Yes. Tapos naglit review ka. So nakikita mo lahat ng information tungkol doon sa in, sa topic na interested ka. So yung question mo based doon sa literature review mo, gagawa ka ngayon ng answer doon sa question mo. So, yun, yun ang magiging, yung answer mo, yun yung statement na yun, yun yung hypothesis mo. So, you, you synthesize an idea out of established... What you have read. Yeah. yeah, so, educated guess. So, ngayon, yung answer doon sa question mo, ngayon, yun ang gagawan mo ng design, experimental design. Para ma-answer mo, para ma-prove mo, tama ba yung question? Tama ba yung answer mo? Yep. yep. O hindi. So, ganun mm -hmm. lang yun kasimple. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. So, this is really the core of the scientific method. So, mm -hmm. so kung nakita nyo kanina, yung dinascuss ni Mama Connie, the front end of that was um, choosing a topic, reading mm -hmm. up the literature, and nandito nakukonekta yun dun sa ginagawa ni JP na how you design your experiments to answer your research questions. So again, at the end of the day po, magka, magkakadugsong-dugsong to. So kung yung experience nyo po, nung nag-research kayo, nung nag-aaral pa kayo, 
uh, or kung nag-aaral pa kayo ngayon, kung feeling nyo po disjointed or disconnected yung ginagawa nyo sa review of literature dun sa pagplano nyo ng experiments, baka po medyo meron tayong kailangang adjustments na gawin kasi uh-huh. technically, all all these steps should be coherent, meaning exactly. natural yung flow, magkakakonekta po yan. You're building on, you're building something. Ayan. Like At saka so yung we... title ng research nyo, temporary, tentative lang yun. At yes. saka ka lang talaga magkakaroon ng yung final na title ng Yeah. Ito, actually, ito, it's, a, it's a common practice among researchers to come up with the title at the end na eh. Actually, yeah, actually, so, I, I would like to raise that point. I so think it out, yeah, but the title of my PhD dissertation was the last thing to uh, to be figured it, out. Exactly. exactly. After four years of doing it. Ayan. Mm-hmm. So, siguro po kung meron dito mga research advisors, huwag po tayong excited sa title. Kasi po, ultimately, the outcome will dictate the title. It's the determinant of your title. It's Ma, the ano yung experimental design? Kasi if it fit nyo sa title. Yes. Eh. Exactly. Yes. yes. Medyo that's actually, and ito, I'm gonna say this, that's, sci- that's doing science backward. Yes. Yung pooper sa mo, ay, walang, ay, walang sense yung, walang sense yung results kasi hindi siya nag-fit dun sa idea ko. Parang medyo may mali po yata kapag gano'n. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So try to reverse engineer the the research process to, yeah. to come up with a coherent and within the context uh, yes. approach. And to be honest po, okay, based on experience, I think all of us three here can relate. When you really do research as a career, mo, most of the time, pag patapos mo na yung project, unrecognizable na siya. From... Mm-hmm. What you have envisioned. Started, yeah. It evolves. Like only about like 10% of what you originally thought would be the answer is the, the, the actual answer. Yeah. So sinab- may nagsabi po rigid yung ibang advisors. Medyo baguhin po natin yan. So siguro po medyo mahirap baguhin na yung nakasanayan nila. But if you become the advisor yourself, alam mo na kung ano yung practice na hindi mo mamanahin. Pwede and naman the, may tentative title eh. Yes. And that's tentative. the operative term. It should be tentative. tentative. And, and siguro po, everyone can relate if advisors are rigid, if they're too in, imposing and inflexible, that also takes away the fun from doing the research. Working title, I like the term. Working title, but not the final title. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. All right. So, Uh, I'm just gonna touch on the soft skills. So it's a medio minor, na siya, pero these are very important uh, skills that uh, we can uh, develop among our students. So uh, when we're trying to come up with a sound uh, experimental design, so inevitably, uh, they develop yung analytical skills na mga sujante because they are trying to um, retrofit or try to uh, come up with a fit for purpose uh, experimental design. Yung nga para ma Uh, ma-answer yung ating mga research question because it has to be um, tailored fit for the uh, for the uh, question research question at hand. So this involves a lot of uh, logical thinking and decision making uh, that we can develop uh, among our students. Analytical skills and uh, another is communication skills um, when we are trying to. Uh, sell our ideas to our peers or to our supervisors uh, or kung humihingi po tayo ng funding uh, based on our research proposal. So, yung experimental design will uh, will equip our students on how to effectively communicate kung bakit kailangan natin itong mga research, uh, yung mga analytical methods na to. Kasi ito po yung mga research objectives na gusto namin uh, ma-fulfill uh, doon sa aming, uh, sa aming project. So, This will improve not only their verbal and written uh, um, written skills, writing skills, but also their persuasion and presentation skills. And JP, also, if I may uh, add, yung first two kasi very critical yan. So yung yeah. kung pinakita ni JP is analytical skills. So it's not only a matter of like, okay, I'm calculating, oh, ito yung outcome. No. 
you have to extract the knowledge. Ano ba yung trend? And what does the trend say? If the trend doesn't make sense, then that means baka mali yung hypothesis mo or hindi, hindi mo ma-prove given the data. Uh-huh. And uh, ang dali kasi kapag yung what you expect, you get. That's easy to explain. But if it's the, the contrary, if it's the, disproving something, that makes it a, a bit more difficult, no? And that ties to communication, no? So when you're communicating the outcome of your research, it's easier to discuss or to present what people expect to see. But mm-hmm. if you are presenting data contrary to what people expect, then that is a true test of communication because you have to be able to get your stake. You have to be ready with your guns. <laughs> yeah. You have to convince your audience that this is the result, this is contrary to what you're expecting, but this is why this makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, and ito po, gusto kong iklaro, when you do science communication, sa kasi kasi yung concept pa yata po sa atin ng poster presentation or oral presentation is, you go there, magsasalita lang ako and that's it. Yeah. Communication is making sure that they agree to what you say. Mm-hmm. Buy-in is the operative term. Kaya po kayo nagde-defense ng proposal, may defense sa thesis, hindi lang po yun, you're gonna tell them what you did and your, what your answers are. You have to convince them that what you're proposing and what you have done are reliable. Exactly. My feedback po. <laughs> it's yeah. only a matter of what you want to say and what you prepared to say. Sabi ni JP, be prepared with all your guns and your weapons kasi when you get interrogated and people are skeptical, you have to convince them using knowledge and data. Exactly. Yun yung guns and weapons mo eh. Yes. Hindi po natin madadaan sa luha at simangot ang, <laughs> <laughs> ang defense. Data po ang basihan. Alright. Solid science. Okay. Science talaga. Yes. So creativity, uh, Kuya Jeff already um, touched on this um, because uh, when we're trying to address research gaps with uh, existing uh, analytical methods, doon na po pumapasok yung creativity on how we can um, come up or synthesize uh, uh, a general picture of the of the of the of the research project uh, using the available tools within our within our uh, disposal. And I so, like the term that you use, JP, general picture. So yung creativity po, it's not only about coming up with an idea or coming up with question. Creativity in the context of research is also coming up with a data-driven narrative. Again, yes. that's also partly creativity kasi once nakuha mo na yung data, kung hindi mo naman in-analyze at hindi mo naman siya convert into a story that people can learn from? Wala. Wala rin. Wala rin essence yung ginawa mo. So in part, creativity is about putting things together to establish something that is logical and that is backed by data. So again, kaya po, tuloy-tuloy yan. Yung ginawa ni JP dito, when you design your experiments, dapat solid yung approach nyo kasi the goal of experimentation is to really prove or disprove your hypothesis. Right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, uh, what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to achieve is to fulfill your research goals. Yes. And uh, the tools at your disposal spells uh, your creativity on the approach that you're that you're gonna uh, employ. In, in experimental design. So, an adaptability. So, ito, very, uh, very familiar po tayo dito when uh, things don't go our way. Uh, there are unexpected challenges and uh, uncertainties. Um, ayun, mama, madedevelop din po natin sa mga sudyante natin. But, but firstly, within ourselves, kasi tayo po yung mga research uh, advisors uh, on how we can uh, work around different challenges and difficulties uh, during the experimentation experiment experimentation process so this will help improve our flexibility resilience and coping skills so uh tied up na din po dun sa creativity 
but okay, that so... that is tied up too with being um reading reading a lot of literature exactly. kasi hindi ka magiging creative kung wala kang knowledge wala kang alam <laughs> yeah, if you're so, not and if you're not foundational then yes and if you're not open minded kasi meron din po mga tao they will keep on reading but if they don't really entertain other ways of doing things mm-hmm. that's count that that's not adaptive you know so if something makes sense be open to it yeah integration is yes. important you yeah, read that's why but you have to know okay how is this related to other things yes so you have to build on what others did and leverage good tools and practices that uh, other established hindi ang ang essence po kasi ng research ay hindi naman lahat ng kailangan gawin natin ay original at i-keep claim natin ang galing-galing ko ako yung gumawa niyan lahat ay good luck po kung kung magawa niyo yun, then good but mm-hmm. isang po hindi siya practical Yeah. Iba lagi And, naman tayong sinasabihan, you have to see the forest for the trees. Yes, yes. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the, the general uh, uh, objective of research is to induce a positive change. Doon po oh, sa yes. kung hindi siya kung hindi naman uh, useful yung mga results na natin. So parang wala lang din. So that's yes. why we're we're working towards a greater good uh, yep. with our research. And then of course, teamwork is there. Uh, ito yung first uh, dab na mga students into like a project project management, right? So, uh, and this involves different people with have, having different backgrounds and different insights uh, or take on a specific problem. And uh, kung, ma, kung ma, ma-harness po natin yung ability ng mga students to voice out their Uh, their insights freely and without judgment, then uh, we are building up uh, an ideal environment for teamwork. Na parang everybody's welcome to pitch in their ideas and uh, work on a specific project as a group. And then, Mas stronger yun. Kasi sabi ni Doc Jeff, merong ibang may special skills sa math, may special exactly. skills sa ganyan, sa ganyan. So if you work together, yeah. iba-iba ang specialty mo, Very strong ang, ang group. And there's exactly. also something that I would also like to positively call, not positively, but just to call out. Kasi ito po na experience ko, no? Ang tendency po kasi ng mga guru, hindi ko naman po nila lahat, dun sa mga nakita ko lang din po nung okay bata pa, ang tendency po nila, dun lang nagpipay attention sa matatalino, yung seemingly matatalino, but then you, again, kaya ko po hinighlight yung kanina yung nirehash ni uh, Mama Connie and ni JP was that, ang mga tao po, mga estudyante, iba-iba po yan ng skills. So, part of building functional research teams within your classroom is having, like, is, is being, is becoming familiar with ano ba yung strengths ng mga student mo. And then you build the team accordingly. Hindi po yung, actually, mas disadvantage yung lahat yung matatalino pagsasama-samahin mo lang. ba? Diba? Ihalo niyo po yan kasi lahat yan may mga kanya-kanyang ma-offer sa table. And in doing so, you're exposing them to other skills as well. May inspire niyo po yung mga students na, ay, they don't have to be an expert in everything. Kasi that's never gonna happen. No. Kahit po kami, we're working in the biggest research groups in the world. We rarely, we never work on anything by ourselves. We no. always bring in the right set of talent. I don't have to be an expert in what other people are doing. But you can actually come up with transformative research and development projects by working with a diverse group of people. Yeah, and that's what I do all the time. So I'm a clinical research person. So usually, ang collaboration ko with doctors, with me, with statisticians, with uh, infectious disease experts, things like that. So, hindi ka talaga nag-iisa lagi. Yes, yes. Mama, may tanong dito na gusto ko lang sagutin kasi this is something that I had to address in my organization. So, um, recently ko, I had to transform how we do innovation for three businesses and I had to design how the scientists will work. Ito po, 
if I can estimate, mga 90 scientists po itong, kung baga mga pusa po na pinastol ko. <laughs> In simple mm-hmm. terms. Okay, ang question po, which is better po to let the students choose their team or it's the research advisor who will arrange the teams? I would suggest the, uh, the, the, the latter. Kasi po, we do have the tendency to work with our friends. Yes. And usually, our friends are people who, have, who think in the actual, in the same way that we do. And ang, ang, kapag nag assemble po tayo ng team, we focus on the skills that we're bringing into the table and that they might not be friends, but you will have the right set of talents needed by the team. That's your first consideration nyo po. And then also, kapag po kasi hindi friends yan, there could be a healthy level of what they call this, exchange rin and opposition. Kasi kailangan nyo din po yun. Hindi po kasi kailangan nyo nasa team eh kung ano lang sabihin ng isa, oo, oo na lahat. Ay, wala bang yayari dyan. <laughs> yes po, the most creative team has, the teams have members in, in them where they can ta- recalibrate. Ano ba yung assumption mo? If that's your assumption, I can question that. And actually po, the most effective ideation is one where in the team can act actually challenge one another. Yun po ang pinaka-creative na team. Pwede pong, mag, pwede pong mag-push back at i-challenge yung idea ng iba. Kapag po, for example, isang matalino lang at yung matalino lang ang masusunod, usually yeah. po, yung quality of That's the... It's a recipe for failure. Yes. Yes. Dapat yeah. po, i-encourage nyo ang students nyo to learn how to engage in constructive and friendly and healthy debate. At ito po, aaminin nyo, ang mga teacher sa atin sa Pilipinas, at least based experience ko, matanong lang na estudyante, nagtataray na. So, medyo tanggalin po natin yun. So, kapag po tayo kasi, ay, if you're someone who gets aggravated when someone challenges you, there's something wrong in that situation. Because if you really are doing research, at isa po sa mga tenets talaga na pag perform the research is having an open mind, you should be open to answering questions. You know, you can also push back on the question if you have the right set of information. But but if it comes to a point na hindi ka makapag-push back because you don't have you don't have anything to back your 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 idea, then that might actually be uh you know like um enough basis for you to consider the other person's perspective. So ganun po yun, you have to have that exchange. That is how you come up with the most creative idea. And to be honest, the most creative ideas are, uh, are usually coming from teams where people have different perspectives and expertise and they're able to connect the dots. Yes, so, very healthy know, discourse. Yes, kasi yung angulo na tinitingnan nitong expert na to, posibleng iba sa angulo nitong isa, but then the best idea is the combination of their perspectives. So ganun po yun. Sa mga guro, wag po kayong rigid, wag po kayong boring. Dapat po, okay lang na medyo magtanong. Mag- <laughs> Kung yung chismisan po, na magkakaiba ang version, ay natatanggap nyo, ay ganun din po sa ID issue. May mga iba-ibang angle po yan. Pero, as a teacher, ang role nyo po is to moderate the conversation and to help the students connect the dots. Wag lang po sa chismis, mas lalo po sa research. Ayan. Ayan. So actually, Doc, this is my last slide. And I've seen that the uh, questions have already piled up in the chat uh, about... Oo nga, medyo. Uh, alam mo, JP, uh, the, the research <laughs> part, the experimental part, really resonates well with yeah. with all of uh, them. Sorry po, po, kasi na, masyado kong naging passionate sa pag-discuss. But no, no, no. And, and also, here. I think, ito kailangan-kailangan talaga nila to eh. Kasi, I mean, I think the ideation part and the review of literature nagagawa na nila yan but then really it's your clear guidance sa experimentation talagang mm-hmm. aminin natin kulang kasi at the high school level bira naman ang may gamit sa lab to practice yeah. this right so uh, siguro po tanong lang po namin if you um, sa inyo po if you would like to stay on and engage with us perhaps for a few more minutes of Q&A we'd be happy to answer questions that you have And then, siguro po, what we can also do para hindi naman po kayo masobrahan ng gutom or baka po nagiinit ng mga uh, kayo, kayo sa upuan nyo, um, we can also have extend the Q&A tomorrow kasi medyo yeah. 
Like, see naman po yung session natin bukas mm-hmm. uh, from from a lecturer's perspective. Ayan. Pero siguro mag-entertain po tayo ng mga questions. Yeah, because these are uh, the some things that I will tackle also tomorrow, like how many number of samples or what statistical data uh, analysis yeah. uh, that we're, we're going to use for our experiments. Uh, so, i-discuss ko po yan bukas. Uh, but uh, may tanong po dito on how many samples of... Uh, samples or trials needed to conduct. Actually, ito naman po ay uh, dictated with, with our resources din. Kasi uh, pag sinasabi po na kailangan parametric yung mga results natin, ang, ang nire-require po na ay 30, 30 uh, uh, measurements or 30 trials. Pero uh, kung ang kaya lang po natin ay tatlo, yun, normally yung, ano po, yung rule of thumb is to make at least three trials. Kasi that way, you have a minimum number where you can um, uh, calculate the standard deviation and uh, the the mean or the average. Uh, pero ito po lahat, uh, i-discuss ko tomorrow and uh, also on the, the statistical uh, test appropriate for our samples. Kasi uh, pag minsan, uh, kailangan din natin i-fit yung statistical treatment with the type of data collection that we did. So, mm-hmm. kailangan tailor fit po yan. Kung so, parametric or non-parametric. Yeah. Gusto ko lang din pong banggitin, medyo nag- nagpaka-mode si JP. Actually, yung master's po ni JP sa Europe is on, metro- is it metrology? Metrology, yeah. Ay, so, yung mga statistics... Measurement, measurement uncertainty. Yeah. Apo, yung mga statistics po yan, binimerienda niya po yan. So, kaya po... <laughs> <laughs> Inaalbusal merienda tapunan niya po yan um, before siya po siya nag-PhD sa catalysis. So I, this is the reason why ini-encourage ko po kayo talagang magtanong. Kasi sa totoo lang po yung mga theories, yung mga best practices na binibigay namin sa inyo, you can look them up online sa, sa books. But then, yun po talagang pagsagot sa mga practical questions ninyo that really makes this training all that practical. Ayan. Exactly. Okay. Ayan. So, a uh, question from Wayne David. Nab- nab- nababasa ko lang siya. Uh, yes. I'm having a lot of research proposal from students involving humans as their respondents. Uh, what are the possible compromises of these uh, types of research? An- an- ano po ba to Qualitative? Or hindi naman po kayo nag-experiment sa taon? Oo. Oo. Siguro kailangan natin i-touch yung uh, ethical uh, research Ethic. ethics. So that's a uh, uh, topic for another day. But uh, there are many um, uh, considerations that we need to 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 do when we're doing like yeah. probably to mga survey type of ano to, to, uh, research. Yeah. Yeah. And most especially po um, siguro aspects of y- yung research na, na mga ganito meron po kasing sensitivities around personal information. Yeah. In this age of data privacy and... Yes. So, uh, meron naman po mga ways around it. Siguro po, this is also like, you know, like a motivation for us to really look for a resource person who could perhaps yeah. a community on research ethics, most especially po uh, around these sensitivities. So, uh, Sir Wayne, ano, binigyan mo kami na mas na hanap kami. Yeah. Na. Because there are standards, I'm pretty sure that there are standards. There are, out there. there are. Yeah. yeah. Kami po, kami, kami po ni JP sa inanimate. Kami po ni JP sa inanimate objects. But then si, si Mama ko ni po sa fungi. But then with with Mama siguro baka we might be able to look. Kasi you you guys you 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 work in an area that involves patients. Yeah. Clinical so trials. usually we have what we call HIPAA. Oh so yeah. Patients. Um, information uh, that we are not supposed to divulge. Yep. So usually in my case, um, so if I have a patient's ID, uh, ID or um, isolate ID, we de-identify. So nobody can access that number. Mm. So it doesn't go, and uh, it doesn't um, get linked to the patient's information. Oh, so so meron po kumbaga mga established protocols on how Meron. Mm-mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. 
So, I may yeah. nag-comment, may nag-comment dito. Mas sumasakit ang ulo ng teacher sa mga grupong nag-aaway-away. So Sir John Michael, when it comes to ideation po, um panoorin niyo po yung webinar namin on brainstorming. brainstorming. Kasi yung sa brainstorming po, there is a systematic way to do it. So meaning, hindi lang po yung yung pag-ideate ay ay mag ano magtalakan lang kayo diyan. Yung mananalo sa talakan, yun yung idea niya yung ano, yung gagawin. Yung brainstorming po there is a way by which you can structure the discussion in such a way that may scoring system na pwedeng bumoto lahat ng estudyante at yung scoring system na yun is based on a clear set of criteria na okay, if this is your idea, ano yung relevance niyan, ano yung, yung practicality, you can, you can set a clear criteria na para maging objective, objective and fair yung process. Ayan. But then, in the process of scoring it, doon na nangyayari yung conversation na, ay, yung idea ko, lamang dito sa aspect na to because of this and that. So, ang, ang key lang po dyan is turuan nyo yung mga estudyante nyo that when they engage in debate, dapat yung argument nila should be based on inform, established information. Right? Tapos wala pong personalan. Yun din po yung tuturuan natin ng mga estudyante na yeah. pwede naman kayong mag, pwede naman kayong mag argue, pero huwag pe personalin. Yung hanggang sa topic lang. And, po, and, and if you are able to teach your students to engage in a healthy debate, ang layo po na mararating na mga yan when it comes to their professional careers. Kasi po, ang sabi nga po sa Hoy Gising, ang pikon ay laging talo. <laughs> yeah. Yung mga, yung mga reference natin ng 1990s na. Diba? Opo. <laughs> Doc Jeff, merong comment si uh, Ma'am Evelyn Moros. As- asan po yung comment ni Ma'am? Ayan. Binabasa ko nga din, Tita, eh. So, Because, okay, basa hindi ko makita. Okay. You are Sabi advocating niya. the value of research. Ito ba yun? Yeah. Opo. Um, can our students use UP laboratory for testing? For testing. Like lab instrument for extracting mushroom enzymes. Yeah. Baka sugurin na so, tayo ng matagal. <laughs> ito na yung ano, ito na yung sinasabi nating collaboration. So exactly. you go to that institute, ask them if they want to collaborate with you on a project, and then kung may publication, i-include nyo sila or whatever yeah. Whatever they want, meron yan silang conditions. So, nasa inyo yan. Mm-hmm. Pero, yeah, but I think pero preliminary, Tita, ano, parang um, offer them your research proposal through an email yes. or certain communication. Para pero mag-echo lang din po ako ng feedback ng mga kasamahan natin na nasa mga higher education institutions. Kung ano ba yung mga challenges na na-encounter nila before kung bakit mm-hmm. minsan hindi rin nag, nag-flourish yung ganong... Um, Uh, approach for collaboration. Yeah. Usually po kasi ang challenge, pag nag-approach po sa kanila, hindi talaga klaro kung anong gustong gawin. Oh. Yeah. Or worse, sa kanila humihingi ng idea. Sa kanila humihingi. Oh, ganun ba? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so ang siguro po, for you to successfully uh, forge a relationship with them, you have to do your homework. Exactly. Hindi po yung pupunta kayo doon tas nga 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 kayo pag tinanong kayo. Ano pong kung gusto niyo talagang gawin? Ano po ba ano, ano po ba ang, ang gusto nating aralin dito? Ano po talaga yung kasi ang itatanong po talaga nila sa inyo. Ano po ba yung kailangan yung gawin? Ano po ba yung yung matutulong namin? So Jen pa pasok Jeff, yung hypothesis niyo. Yes, exactly. hypothesis. And actually, it's experimental planning. You have exactly. to go as far as that. Kung ano man yung kinover namin ni JP sa session na to, hanggang doon sa paggawa nyo ng experimental plan, dapat po baon-baon nyo na yun. Oo. Hindi po pwede. Pag-present, mag-present sila ng proposal doon, ito yes. yung aking gustong gawin, okay. ito yung aming... Ang baon po natin ay research proposal, hindi po pangarap. Ayan. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan. Okay ba, yeah. Ma'am Evelyn? <laughs> Actually po Ma'am Donna, there are some kasi meron po sila mga extension programs. Meron. Meron po sila mga committees. Yeah, okay. Pero yun nga po, ang barrier po dyan is kapag pumunta kayo doon na hindi kla- kayo klaro sa intention at kung ano pong hinihingi yung tulong. And then secondly po, yung isa rin pong barrier is syempre po yung paplanuhin yung experiment is something that would keep the students safe. 
yun, safety rin po is also mm-hmm. a very important consideration. Kasi syempre po, pag nandun kayo sa university at nag-ooperate po ng, nag implement kayo ng experiment at nandun yung estudyante nyo, liability po yun ng university. So exactly. dapat po, na-scope out nyo tong lahat ng considerations na to na dapat po, practical yung approach and then, na-aral nyo po, safety, safe, ano ba ang magiging uh, ang mga estudyante nyo kapag in-implement na yun dun sa worksite na yun. Kasi po, pag nandun na kayo sa campus nila, responsibility na nila kayo. Ayan. Yeah, so there. Ayan. Yung po okay. mga questions on statistical treatments, uh, I will tackle them uh, for tomorrow. And then, ay, magsisend lang po ako sa group chat natin ng, ano, ng tawag dito, attendance form. Opo. Para, and then, bale, may, ito po, tatapusin po natin to bukas. So, yun pong ating um, certificate ay ibibigay lang po natin sa, syempre po, sa makakatapos po ng ating um, courses. So, mm-hmm. ito po ay hindi po um, um, uh, hulugan. <laughs> installment. Kalahati <laughs> lang hindi po ito installment. Uh, opo, hindi po ito ano ba yung ano sa ibon yung ba yun? yung 2 gibs, 3 gibs ganyan. So um kung saan saan na pupunta tong usapan na to. Yeah, kasi unfair <laughs> naman din po dun sa mga nag nag attend ng both uh, uh both sessions. So ayan. Yeah, so we hope that you stick around until tomorrow. You really uh, do to be able to your dedication. And then yun po Hindi po kami ni JP pumunta sa sobrang detalyadong step by step ito yung gagawin niyo kasi meron na po kami mga materials for that what yeah. we th- what we decided to focus on and what we really recognize to be of greater value is ito po conversation na to mapag-usapan natin makita namin ano ba yung pagkakaintindi niyo sa mga bagay-bagay at kung meron po kaming kailangan i-fine tune or idagdag or ibawas or i- or baliin gagawin po namin dito kaya po sana po dito pag nag-usap-usap po ulit tayo wag niyo na pong babanggitin uli sa akin yung 5 years or 10 years lang ang literature kasi apat na taon na po akong ano binabango ko diyan lagi ko na po yang naririnig um, tigilan na po natin yan but <laughs> just Parang meron silang comment kanina na kung ilan ang pwede. Sa amin kasi, sa akin, Apo. pagka tapos na yung experiment ko, when I'm going to write it up, tapos hahanap ako ng journal kung saan ako magsasubmit, doon ko malalaman kung ilan ang, re- ang, ang required. required. Kasi minsan, ay nila ng masyadong marami kasi humahaba. Yes, yes. yes. So doon mo malalaman. And sigur- actually ako mama yung approach ko diyan is if yung review ng literature ko unang-una nang galing sa established institutions at sobrang solid nung so, sobrang solid oh. nung, nung binigay nilang basis mm-hmm. I don't have to keep looking out for yeah, you already have a basis exactly. kasi, kasi yung, yung, na yung basis mo eh yung sinabi nila nag-backtrack na sila Yeah, exactly. So sila na lang ang i- They did the job for you. <laughs> sa site po, they did the job. The job. And actually po, yung review of literature, sa site and the review of literature, the quality is not based on the number of papers that you read, but it's on the quality of papers that you're using as basis for your yeah. claim. Kasi, and also, and dito papasok na yun, kung panoorin nyo yung review of literature na webinar namin, kung game of numbers po yun, ang daming predatory dyan na papers. Ay, nako, sinabi mo. You also have to learn how to fish out ano ba yung reliable at ano yung hindi. And discern. Yeah. Ayan. May, meron din pong fake news sa ano. Actually, marami. Merong <laughs> list yan. Merong list. Merong listahan ng predatory. So, focus on the quality of yun ng publication. And kailangan po, you also have to get to know who are the people behind the work. Yeah. Pwede niyo din po. Make it a habit to, to search people. Yeah, you have to get to know like, you know, like the leading experts in the field. But then that doesn't mean na sila lang yung sikat, sila yung lang yung paniniwalaan. Ang ibig sabihin lang po nun is kapag sobrang established na sila dun, then siguro po um, what comes with reputation is confidence. But meron pa rin po siyang minsan naliligaw ng lindas, minsan po may nakakamit. Meron, ak- meron akong labs na pag nakita ko yung pangalan nila, mm, Meron na kaagad akong... Kasi minsan, half-hazard ang ginagawa. So, minsan, 
nasisira ang pangalan nila eh kasi mm. yung siguro hindi nila masya sa so, dami na kasi nila ding ginagawa hindi na nila masyadong na popolis yung mga estudyante nila yes po ayan all right so mm. ay nakakabot tayo ng ano 1:30 nang Meron pa isang uh, comment, so, so, so. Jeff, o oh, how comment. about us in elementary? How can we enhance the love of research? The love of research. Uh, Actually po, alam nyo po, ma'am, uh, Sir Zandi. Zandi. Sir Zandi. <laughs> um, Actually po, kahit pa lang po dun sa experiment, make your experiments enjoyable. But then, I think ang... medyo kinukulang po tayong mga guro sa pagtuturo is really to make it clear to them na oy itong ginawa mong to you are trying to understand the problem oy yung ginawa mo na yon you came up with a logical process of solving the problem mm-hmm. kapag po kasi hindi aware ang students sa kung anong ginagawa nila it's ang ang nangyayari lang po ang, ang view po ng estudyante diyan ay binigyan lang ako ng listahan ng gagawin ko ginawa ko and then yeah, yeah. yeah. Kaya hindi sila interesado. Yung higher order thinking skill, hindi nila marirealize. But make it re- make make them realize that that oh, you know, you you came up with their own design. Creative ka. Kapag po meron silang ganung positive feedback, kapag nare-reinforce yung maganda nilang ginagawa, 'di ba? Syempre po mga estudyante, ano, tonto ka sila pag feeling live. Oy, brainy ako doon. Ang galing ganito. <laughs> <laughs> Ewan, eh, gano'n naman yung, ano, yung mentality natin. Sorry, pagbasa pa. Pagkagawin ko uli yun. Yeah. Diba? So, dapat po, you know, when you see something of beauty or when you see like a like good work done, you have to speak to it. Recognize. Yeah. Kailangan pong gano'n. Kailangan, hindi lang yung, ay, kasi po, again, ang tendency, hindi ko naman, again, hindi ko po nila lahat, I have to qualify this. Ang tendency po kasi sa atin, at least sa naranasan po, at least ito, first hand, first hand experience, results-oriented. Pag hindi mo nakuha yung resulta, wala. wala, wala walang katuturan lahat ng ginawa mo. Mali po yun. Ayan. Yeah, katulad nga nung nagtanong sa akin, sabi niya, tita, gusto ko ng, gusto ng teacher ko na mag, ano, i, i screen yung isang algae for anti-cancer capability. Sabi ko, anong gusto mong gawin? Hindi rin niya masabi. Anong sabi ng teacher? Hindi ko po alam. <laughs> Yun po. So, again, hindi po kailangan umabot sa research. Kailangan po yung appreciation nila ng experiment. So, kaya po ganun yung build up scientific method muna and then experimentation kasi isang question, isang process. Ganun muna yon. Tapos kung Kung mapapansin nyo, ang research, pinapagawa lang third or fourth year, that's uh, under the prem, from uh, uh, based on the premise na na-practice na nila yung scientific method via experimentation. So, kailangan yung scope nila mas lumawak na. Spread out, yeah. Yung research, multiple experiments yun. Kasi Jeff, nung nagturo ako ng cell biology, yes. introduction to cell biology, unang-unang topic, yan, scientific method. Opo. Actually, Agong sa lahat, Yes, ma'am. Actually, sa Biology One laboratory natin, JP, I don't know if you experience the same. Yeah. Ang first, ang first experiment po namin sa Bio One was observation. Yeah. Always. Write down, Always. Write down what you observe. And alam mo po, yung marami na yung na struggle na yung pag sinabing observe, hindi lang ko ulit na yung nakita, yun lang yung isusulat. Meron ng interpretation agad, which is wrong. Mm-hmm. wala in observation lang dapat nakita mong green at tatsulok yun lang yung isusulat mo ganun lang siya so eh di ba nagja-jump tagad sa interpretation so doon mo nakikita na may breakdown may breakdown doon sa familiarity nila ng process na akala nila yung observation may conclusion kan agad o, diba? so dyan po papasok yung mga judgmental yan yeah. mm-hmm. oo yung mga <laughs> mga nahuhusga ng kapwa ayan <laughs> Again, kung saan tayo na tayo na pupunta para... <laughs> Kaya bukas, isulat niyo yung mga questions niyo para hindi malimutan. I took them down. I took them down. I, mean, I, I, I copied everything, tita. So... Hindi, <laughs> yung tita. Baka may maisip pa sila ngayong gabi. Ay, ngayon, I'm... ngayong araw. Parang para medyo, medyo nag-aalala po ako sa inyo kasi yung mga kapiloso po, hangko lang po ako napupulot niyo. Andala natin mm-hmm. yung edition proposal at hindi pangarap. Ayan. Pugot? Pugot yun? Yeah. Oh, hindi kasi totoo so naman. 
Hindi kasi po, I, I mean, we, yung, uh, ito po kasi based on concert, conversations ko with some of my friends from UP na nasa iba't ibang institutions na they really want to help. They, they really do. They do. Kasi meron po talagang lahat ng institution doon, meron silang extension program na ang goal nila is to help out yung mga nasa high school na nag-perform ng research. Pero ang struggle po talaga is they come in unprepared. So, paano po kayo tutulungan kung hindi nila naiintindihan kung paano kayo tutulungan? So, they appreciate the hunger uh, for, 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 for to, to, to gain answers or and to do research. But then, again, kailangan po klaro and actionable yung idea nyo. Na pagpunta nyo doon, sasabihin nyo po, ito yung kailangan ko sa iyo. Yung parang, gawin niya po yung ano, parang uh, siguro bragging rights. Sa pagpunta ko dun sa UP, sinabi ko sa, sa dun sa scientist nila dun na, ito yung kailangan kong gawin mo para sa akin. Ganyan. Mm-hmm. Usan nyo sila. Ganyan. <laughs> Alright. Pero si Jeff, meron silang, um, uh-huh. ah, can we send our questions through Gmail? Hindi. Yeah, bukas, I'm itanong nyo bukas. Isulat nyo nga yun para hindi makalimutan. May question din po kasi mama dun sa attendance form. <laughs> ah, ganun ba? You can ask ah, okay. some of their questions yeah. for tomorrow in advance. Yun po. I mean, if you, um, hindi naman po siya requirement para lang din po makita namin ni JP at mapag-isipan na rin namin kung paano namin sasagot. Uh, okay. And we might be able to also like customize the content or make adjustments um, as needed. Uh, para po masigurado na... Ito po yung design thinking na sinasabi ko. Yung tatanungin muna kayo bago kami gagawa ng content. Kasi ayaw din po namin yung pupunta kami dito, papasok kayo sa, sa seminar. Tapos feeling namin, alam namin yung kailangan nyo. So kaya po, ano, nagtatanong din po muna kami para po sigurado namin mahihit namin yung mga pinpoints. Yung mga reklamo nyo po sa buhay. Opo. Kaya na, ano yun po natin yan. Pero yun po sinabi ni ma'am, I can relate. Yung mga students niya, may explanation agad. Eh hindi pa nakakapag-experiment. So yun po, again, nangyayari po yan kasi may breakdown sa pagkaturo ng scientific method at ng experiment. So, Importante talaga yun. Ito po, sa mga teachers po natin, papakausap ko lang po sa inyo, maturo nyo lang po yung scientific method ng maayos at ma-relate nyo sa experiment, nagwagi na po kayo. Sobrang, sobrang mas lumaki pa po yung ambag nyo sa bayan. Malaki na po yung ambag nyo sa bayan, pero mas, mas ano po yun, mas, mas aangat pa yun. Ayan.